Hello everybody, once again welcome to Wilderspool Stadium for the Stones Bitter Championship Clash between the visitors on your screen, the men in the orange shorts from Post Office Road, Featherstone and top of the table, Warrington. Straight into the visitors, lining up Martin Pearson, Ikram Butt, Carl Gibson, Ivor Oparte, Owen Simpson, Francis Maloney, Brett Dart, Steve Malloy, Richard Gunn, Leo Casey, here's one for you. Both the second row, 11 Gary H. Price and 12 Gary S. Price. Loose forward, the highly rated Brendan Tooter, 14 Terry Manning and 15 Neil Roebuck. Featherstone Rovers coming here with a middling sort of record. 1-6, drawn 1, lost 5. Haven't won an away game since the opening day of the season at Hilton Park. Steve Martin, top-rated coach, got a difficult squad together for me to forecast. They can be explosive one day, really turn the uh, football on. Unfortunately, been inconsistent. Here's today's mascot, there's the world of Spill Run, have a listen to that. We're proud to welcome today 11 years old Ken Goslin. Ken attends Padgett High School, his hobbies are rugby, football and golf. And Ken's favourite players, two Welshmen, Jonathan Davis and Alan Bateman. So thanks very much to uh, Ken's parents for providing him. He's had a wonderful day today, meeting the directors, he's been in the, uh, been in the changing rooms, he's seen his heroes getting ready for the match. A day Ken will never forget, Warrington Idol FC making a kid's dream come true. If you're interested, it's a phone call away, ring the club. With that, straight into Brian Johnson's table toppers, lining up Lee Penny, Matt Forster, Chris Rudd, Jonathan Davis, Rod Myler, Kevin Ellis, Greg Mackey, Gary Chambers, John Thursfield, Craig Teitzel, Paul Cullen, Dave Elliott, Kelly Shelford, loose forward. Subs for the Wires today, Paul Derbyshire and Gary Tees. Warrington's league record coming into the game, going for their eighth straight win out on a 10 and 2 record, putting them top of the Stones Bitter Championship. There's a nice picture in the middle of the screen for you. Both the mascots, unfortunately, I can't give you the uh, Featherstone mascots details, but both of those kids down there, a day I'll never forget, with team captains and our match official today, Robin Whitfield. One My cameraman, Stuart Wilson, just telling me that the mascot lives next door to him, so there could be a cheap video changing hands there. Anyway, the formalities are nearly uh, over and done with. I'll just flick the papers, look for my fill-in sheet, tell you about Featherstone. Have a look at their scrum half, Brett Dant. He's an ex-Brisbane player, played for the Valleys, and he also played for Fulham. Gary H. Price, who is wearing number 11, escaped from a disciplinary hearing on Thursday with sending off sufficient. And that's about the size of it. Francis Maloney wearing six today for the Rovers. Played for the GB under-21s in midweek here at Wilderspool. Was man of the match and he can play. Anyway, the onboard computer is running. Warrington are in possession. Midway inside their own red zone. I've got half an eye on the uh, Castleford-Bradford game at Weldon Road. Would we'll do this club a power of good. If Castleford could uh, force the win. There's Mackie, feeds Gary Chambers. Was a doubt about Chambers' place in today's team. There'll be no doubt about his place in the GB team next season, but we'll have to wait and see. Dave Elliott's gone midfield, takes a big shot from Featherstone loose forward. Brendan Tooter, bit of niggling in the tackle. It's kick time, Jonathan Davis in the top ten of goal kicking and try scoring. Second highest point scorer in the rugby league. That's what you call earning your money. Look it up for the tackle. Featherstone will start from deep, Chambers on the tackle, it's a darting run midfield, Paul Cullen brings a tackle off, early stages, Wilderspill, healthy crowd building up, crowd's up 30% at Wilderspill Stadium, it'd be up a bit more if you were here, that scrum half Brett Dant there, has released the ball, midfield run comes in, Cullen on the tackle, assisted by top tackler John Thursfield, busy hooker Richard Gunn throws the ball out, Thursfield on the tackle again. Robin Whitfield shouts last tackle. We will see the kick come in. It's a midfield skyer. Kick far side to us. Lee Penny also figured in the under 21 international. Scampers out, makes the quarter line. It's tackled by Kiwi centre Ivor Oparte. 
sharp midfield run. Leo Casey puts a stop to that. As I've already said, Featherstone capable of uh, being brilliant one day, terrible the next. Craig Teitzel, former Illawarra Steeler, settling into the first team now on the run there. Here's skipper Greg Mackey. Unloads for Kelly Shelford. Shelford's going, breaks the half, 10 metres inside the Featherstone half. Throws a sidestep, Lee Penny comes up in support. Early stages, third minute, Warrington turning it on. Shelford acting half. Here's Greg Mackey, and we have offside in midfield. Here's a chance then. Decision for somebody to make. Two points will be put on the board by Jonathan Davis. First penalty of this uh, rather overcast, damp, drizzly afternoon to the Warrington Club then for offside. Central. Featherstone Rovers got a difficult enough task without conceding those sort of penalties. Davis finds himself 10 metres out central, will be successful. Or he better add be, because I've just wrote it down. In the third minute at Wilderspool. Score will go 2 to nil. Warrington, of course, uh, had a team to knock off the top of the table. Got some difficult fixtures coming up. Got to go away to St. Helens next week, get on the coach for that. What a crunch. Boxing Day away at Widnes. January the 2nd, you know who come to Wildersville. Here's Davis then. Points machine, two points on the board. Score goes Wellington 2, Featherstone 0. Just while we're getting the restarts, we'll uh, pay the rent. Thanks to match sponsors, Hertel UK, who've provided the cash for us to get hold of Jonathan Davis. Match ball sponsored by Index and the programme Marsden Chemicals. Thanks to all of the above. Without them, there would be no top-class rugby league at Wilderspool. Featherstone prop, XY a player. Steve Malloy on the tackle there. There's Gary H. Price, GB Tordis wearing 11, getting involved in the action. Early lead for Brian Johnson's men is Dave Elliott. Has said in a local interview, his first game in the second row, he was concentrating on defence. Now he's looking to run. It's Tightsall piling into the uh, defensive line. Richard Gunn on the tackle. Opposite number. First field feeds Gary Chambers. Rampages as ever into the Rovers' half. Kick time then for the men in the blue and yellow stripes. Here's Davis. Angles the kick, Featherstone fullback, Martin Person takes super style. Martin Person possesses explosive pace, can play in the centres. There's a darting run across the quarter line, Ikram but wearing two. Loose forward, Brendan Toot has unloaded, it's with Francis Maloney, man I've already told you about. Waddington dropping back the required ten. Featherstone going midfield, first field and Chambers affect the tackle. Big run from number 10, Leo Casey. Kick time then for Featherstone. Ball's fed back, Pearson. Kicks long and left. Lee Penny does the business, comes out running, looks to make the quarter line. Mark Forster has half a yard, attacks it. Maloney on the tackle, assisted by Gibson. Touch judge near side, looks to have indicated a knock on. Brings the travelling post office road support to life. Look for Featherstone to get a set of six here within the Warrington red zone. Scrum half, Brett Dark feeds, first scrum of the day to the Rovers. Running move worked. Ivor Row Party, Tess Kiwi wearing four. Hammered. Row coming out from the railway end. There's loose forward two to. Difficult character. He's bounced. Top class defence. Featherstone looking to square the game up. Pearson's cropped up in the line. Bit of atmosphere creeping into the proceedings now. Running move once again. That's Steve Malloy, former wire player. GB squad member, class act all round. There's Dant. Brett Dant looking for a yard. None forthcoming. Penny on the tackle. Kick time for Featherstone Rovers then. 2-0 down, early stages. Now in the seventh minute. 
There's Yaskaya. Panic stations. Lee Penny. Ball's fumbled. Robin Whitfield gives a drop out. Featherston supporters uh, claiming the score. Robin Whitfield on hand. Lee Penny must have put the ball to safety. We will get a drop out from under the bar. Looking round will the spill. It's uh, healthily full. Here's Davis then. With a good drop out, makes touch. Featherston showing straight away that they're prepared to come here and play open football. The press, the media, television coverage even, starting to acknowledge Warrington's intent of moving the ball at all times. Featherston have got the same attitude, should be a good game to watch. Second scrum of the day. Goes away of the men in the orange shorts. There's a tackle from Kevin Ellis. There's Brett Dart, feeds Maloney. Feeds Tuta, Tuta supplies a hand off, gets a ball out. I Kroon Buck looking at the defender. Gap was there. So that's two scoring chances that Featherston have had. Early warning for the Warrington defence. Rain coming in steadily now from the left-hand side on your screens. Third scrum of the day goes the wire's way. Just mark that down on my sheet. Scrums two to one. For the Rovers, there's Mackey. Big run midfield. Super tackle, Carl Gibson. Short side run, it's Gary Chambers. Chambers dragging defence with him. That's what Gary Chambers is uh, good at these days. Getting a big round of applause. Mackey once again, Kevin Ellis. Craig Tysel hits the ball hard. Unloads for Paul Cullen. Paul Cullen's going. Super work, Greg Tysel, brilliant support run. Brett Dance on the tackle, it's Mackey. Runners everywhere. Mackey chips for Dave Elliott, intelligent kick. Elliott has the space, what a try! Have another look at that, Dave Elliott scores the try in the ninth minute. Tell you earlier in the commentary, that's what Dave Elliott said he was going to do. Big work was supplied initially. Craig, Craig Tysel hit the ball hard, found Paul Cullen. Cullen made big yardage, ground was picked up. Greg Mackey took the ball, saw Dave Elliott sprinting up at pace, chipped the defence, bounced up for Dave Elliott, had the strength and the power, crashing over. Score presently 6 to 0 in the ninth minute. Now that super try there, another contender for try of the season. This year's end of season tape's going to be well worth the money. That try results in Jonathan Davis on the quarter line, 11 metres in from the far side touchline, to the right of the post as uh, Davis looks. Looking to put more than a full score in the game. We've had the one penalty, the Elliott try. Push round Wilderspill Stadium then. Davis kicking to a packed Fletcher end. Strikes well. Crowd like it. Indecision. Robin Whitfield gives the goal. Score goes eight points to nil. Well, to be quite honest with you, from my angle, I don't know. One touch judge flagged the uh, conversion away. The other raised his flag. Robin Whitfield, match official, awards a goal, it's 8-0. Mark Foster breaks the quarter line there. Warrington threatening to coast the game then. Featherston are not here for a laugh. They've not come to watch Warrington play. They will get involved in the game. Their first season back in the top flight after promotion last year. Laying a good foundation. Steve Martin, a canny coach. Bit of a roar coming in for the Marlin there. Here's Chambers. Rampant once again. Leaves two turn in his wake. So here's Mackey. Switch play cleverly. Kelly Shelford unloads. Chris Rudd starting to look like the class player he was before he got his injury. It's Mackey. Ellis. It's a chipper. Pearson's got his work cut out. Davis knocks the ball backwards. Carl Gibson takes the ball and a huge shot. Pressure defence is applied, Tysel and Cullen 
effect the tackle. So Warrington coming off the block straight away at 100 miles an hour. Featherston being battered out of it at this point. Unloading the ball well there. Hooker Richard Gunn keeps possession. Featherston deep in their own red zone. There's Price. Featherston looking to Bill Long then. Penalty offside, midfield. Mr. Whitfield correct. Penalties go one apiece. So here's a kick into the gantry. Ball just uh, flies by to our right. So the tap penalty, 10 metres inside the Warrington half. Best Steve Malloy. Malloy wearing eight. Richard Gunn acting half. Brett Dant. Here's a big run from Gary H. Price. Ball will go through Dant again. It's with Prop Leo Case there. Big tackle Dave Elliott. Ball's gone from one end of the park to the other in three tackles then. Featherston looking to remain in the game. Mackey on the tackle there. There's Tuta, Brendan Tuta. Unload super style in the tackle. Ball goes to ground. Possession for Brian Johnson's top of the table, Warrington. There's Lee Penny. Foster acting half. Foster scoots away, has a yard, goes. Mark Foster's going. Foster threatening to go the whole way. Picks up 15 good yards. There's Shelford. Dazzling sidestep. Breaks the half. Gary H. Price on the tackle once again. Thursfield. Chambers. Head down going hard. As usual. Malloy on the tackle. Here's Mackey. Tightsell. Long ball, first field, Lee Penny has to cut. Tackle breaks out midfield, Gary S. Price. Kick time for the wire. Look for the skyer, Jonathan Davis. Supplies, big pressure. This is what Graham Steadman had to contend with, and he made a hash of it. Martin Pearson hasn't. He's tackled at the quarter. Big work, Martin Pearson there. Here's a run again from acting half. Shelford in the tackle, Cullen in the tackle. Dave Elliott in the tackle. Featherstone bring it short side. Greg Mackey crash tackle. Read the play well, supplied the hit. Round of applause comes in. Elliott on the tackle there. Cullen gets involved. Penalty will require a, a visit from Tony Rothwell. Looks to have done his left thumb. Could be a dislocation. Let's recap the game. Scrums are 2-1 for Featherston. Penalties are 2-1 for Featherston. Score reads 8-0 for the Warrington Club in the 16th minute. Well, Martin Pearson has been tested severely with the uh, bombs and stood up to the test this far in. That's a hush, Wilderspill Stadium then. Everybody waiting for the uh, injured player to recover. Big crunch for the wire next Saturday at Knowlesley Road. Make sure you keep the day spare, get on the coach. That will be a magnificent encounter. So Paul Cullen then, happily, able to resume. Pearson supplies the kick. Featherston will have a set of six tackles then. From 14 metres inside the wire half, there's Steve Malloy, Cullen on the tackle, Malloy picking up big yardage, refusing to go down, super effort from Steve Malloy there. Bit of a mix up at the play the ball, Brett Dant wearing seven, Gary Chambers wearing eight, end of move. There's uh, prop Leo Casey, Elliot on the tackle, Casey going backwards. Featherston keeping the game even. Territorial in, in possession, making good use. There's Price. Gary H. Price wearing 11. Another good surging run. So Dant takes the ball midfield. Steve Malloy. 
Ellis and Thursfield combine. Eight metres, one tackle to go. Eight to nil down. Dart will supply the chip. Over hits it. Ball out on the full. So here come the wire then. Lee Penny. Looks to have picked up a few yards pace since last season. Remember his hat trick against the uh, Hunslet Club in the Regal Trophy. Here's Chambers. Mixing it with three forwards as usual. Starting to get rave reviews in the national press. It's Tightsell. Takes the tackle from Richard Gunn. Paul Cullen now recovered. Excellent copy boot tackle from Leo Casey. Has uh, damaged his shoulder in the process, mind you. Dave Elliott, jink in midfield. Richard Gunn on the tackle. Kick time for Brian Johnson's men. It's Davis to oblige. A huge swirling skyer for Pearson. This time he's not so sure. Robin Whitfield wipes the slate clean. Six tackles to go from within the Rovers' red zone. Kelly Shelford, capable of doing absolutely anything, runs central. Steve Malloy on the tackle. Bit of marlin in the tackle, nothing to write home about. That is Gary Chambers. Going the only way he knows, hard and central. Rows of uh, appreciation coming in from the Fletcher end. Warrington have stacked deep left. There's Kevin Ellis. Cuts. Takes a super tackle once again from tough tackling prop Leo Casey. Couple of yardage uh, lost on that particular play. It's Mackey. David Elliott. Paul Cullen. Kelly Shelford. Shelford attacks. Dave Elliott, marvellous support run. Good scrambling defence from the men in the orange shots. Shelford, Ellis, Jonathan Davis, Paul Cullen. Drops the ball. Robin Whitfield is right there. Spots the uh, knock on. Warrington just coming within inches. Ball came out in the tackle. Sustained round of applause then from the Warrington fans for that attacking play. Meanwhile, Carl Gibson wearing three on a mazy run. Paul Cullen puts an end to it. Once again, I'll repeat the score. Eight points to nil for Brian Johnson's men. We're on quarter time. Ikram Butt wearing two, leaving defenders. Big tackle breaks out from uh, Craig Tightsell. There's Tuta. Elliot's on the tackle. I can see below me, Rob Myler. No, it's John Thursfield, apologies. Has got a rather bad knock. Featherstone had at it. Midfield, look at this. Super backing up. Brett Dorn. Well, the ball's come out again. Jonathan Davis feeds Rob Myler. Exciting play. What more can you ask for? Must have a word for the players. The pitch is slippy. Had a bit of drizzle. That's why the ball's coming out. Lee Penny. GB under 21 fullback. Casey on the tackle again. John Thursfield's got an injury to his left ankle. Away from play. Tackle breaks out at the half. Gary H. Price involved. Thursfield does not look to be in good shape whatsoever. Chambers in midfield looking for support. Three forwards finally put him away. Featherston dropping back the required 10. Warrington stacked deep left. Club skipper Greg Mackey. Shelford, Matt Forster, step in, John Thursfield, I feel, will have to be leaving the game, there's a handicap, losing the hooker, that's tight so, spinning through the tackle and loads, Matt Forster, there's a rarity, a Matt Forster bomb, Pearson with time, fluffs it again, well there's a comedy play, two knock-ons, advantage at the scrum, should go to Brian Johnson's men, now, who's going to adopt the hooking role? I know my cameraman, Stuart Wilson, has often said Kevin Ellis could uh, do the job. Now we'll find out. It will not be John Thursfield. Warrington skipper Greg Mackey wanders across to see uh, how Mr Thursfield is. He's having his left ankle strapped. He will be able to carry on. Why the game's been stopped for this, I don't know. Mr Whitfield should keep the game moving. No stoppages in pro rugby league. Wow, we've got a break in play. 
don't forget the wolf pack here at uh, top of the table warrington rlfc if you've got kids under 16 one 10 pound payment one 10 pound payment they can come down here and see the league championship one and see every first team game academy game and alliance game now compare that with the leeds club charging kids a fiver to enter headingley 10 quid every game Well, the game's still being held up for this injury to John Thursfield. Don't want to split airs with Mr Whitfield. He's a referee, I'm not, but I don't understand. Why the game's being held up is an advantage for the wire, of course, if they can get Thursfield back in the front row, which will be the case. Mr Whitfield having a laugh about uh, proceedings with supporters below us. Looking round Wilderspool, I've put the crowd at four and a half thousand. Four and a half to five, says Stuart. So healthy attendances. Be a bit more if you were here. Another scrum for the wire. Scrums two apiece. Jonathan Davis takes the tackle midfield. Kevin Ellis directs in uh, operations. Greg Mackey at the controls. Feeds Kelly Shelford. Rob Myler has the space, has the pace, has the determination, has the score. Score goes 12 points to nil for the Warrington Club in the 24th minute. Well, that's Rob Myler's sixth try in four games. You saw the hold up for Thursfield to get the ball out. Warrington moved it swiftly. Greg Mackey handled the ball last. Rob Myler had half a yard. Super power and pace crashing over. Score goes 12 0. Davis should convert. Game starting to slip away from uh, the visitors then. Who are finding themselves eighth in the uh, first division, which is a good achievement after promotion last year. Davis then. 13 metres out, maybe 15 metres to the left of the uprights as he looks, kicking at a pack Fletcher end, looking to make the score 14-0, should be successful, we'll see if the touch judges agree this time, they do. Well, the comments around me on the gantry here at uh, the famous Wilderspool Stadium is that Myler's pace was blistering from step one. Here we go then. It's 14-0. Featherstone fans asking, did Mr Cullen step out of play? Match officials say no. Here's Mark Foster coming field, hungry for the ball. Foster's going. Foster breaking the line of defence. Play resuming, Craig Tightsall battling it out midfield. Always takes two or three forwards to put him away. Tightsall's lost the boot. Gary Chambers, Tutor involved again. Here's Greg Mackey, Kevin Ellis, that's Paul Cullen taking ball and tackle. Kick time for Brian Johnson's men. Look for the skyer again. Mr. Pearson's earning his car on today. That's a positional kick. He's overhit it, but only by an inch. So, let's have a look at the scrum count. Presently two apiece, our fifth scrum of the afternoon will take place now. Correction, a turnover will take place now. Will be six tackles for Featherstone from 10 metres within the Warrington half. Brett Dance unloaded for Gary S. Price, who is then driven backwards again. That's become a feature of Warrington's tackling. Brett Dance. Crash tackle midfield, Craig Tysel. Featherstone stacked deep right, here's Brendan Tutor. Unloads great style, super play. Featherstone still showing you good skills. Steve Malloy wearing eight. 
is outstanding under 21 scrum half uh, standoff Francis Maloney. Bit of a roar coming out from the uh, Yorkshire Travellers. High crew but well there's a penalty but offside halting the flow of the play. Penalties going three to one in favour of the wire. Bit of booing coming in as usual. Would have expected Featherstone to try and get two points on the board. Finding themselves 14 points to nil down, have no other option really. Well, chance of boring coming in from the uh, Featherstone supporters. One thing those hard working players out there in the orange shirts don't need is barracking at a time like this. However, Martin Pearson finds himself 16 metres out, maybe nine to the right in the 29th minute. Pearson looking to put Featherstone's first two on the board. That's a hushed will to spill. Strikes straight through the middle. Score goes 14 2. before we get the uh, restart after Pearson's successful uh, penalty conversion there the Rovers in the orange making a substitution Icrum but wearing two leaving the field and when the sub turns round I'll tell you who it is I'll just to mess up the commentator the players uh, refuse to turn round I'll get to that later thanks I'm informed from my right that it is number 14, Terry Manning, who has replaced number two, Ikram Butt. Score reads 14-2 then. We're now in the 30th minute. Featherstone having to build long. Kevin Ellis get, getting in a good tackle, assisted by Myler and Paul Cullen. That's Carl Gibson. Tights along the tackle. Not had a Warrington score in this game now since the 24th minute. The way they've been playing recently, it seems like an age if they've got 10 minutes without some sort of score. Featherstone, meanwhile, sticking to the task. Warrington penalised for offside to uh, concede the two. We'll concentrate now on getting back straight away. There's Maloney. Gun throws midfield. Brett Dant kicks into space, that's uh, over hit. Lee Penny, scampers over. A lot of supporters at Wilderspill now starting to talk about the team being championship material, but three of the last four games are away from Wilderspill against top class teams. Far too early for those chickens to be counted. Anyhow, here's Chambers. Chambers spins and loads for Thirstfield. Mark Foster cropping up more and more infield. Hungry for possession, chasing the ball. Thirstfield, Teitzel. Gary S. Price wearing 12. Ably assisted by Leo Casey wearing 10. Big tackle there. Warrington with personnel left and right. Dave Elliott's got a knock. Here's Cullen attacking the half. Gets there. 13 years, Paul Cullen's been at Wilderspill. Yes, Tightsell forgot the ball. No knock on. Lee Penny takes one high shot. It is kick time for Brian Johnson's men. Davis appears in the uh, play. Ball hits Steve Malloy. Whitfield gives Robin Whitfield. My apologies. Gives six more tackles. It's Penny. Chambers tackles a start in to get a little bit borderline. Whatever. Chambers felt the full force there on his left ear hole. It's tight, so uh, correction, Cullen. Featherston deciding they will not have Warrington scoring any more points. There's Greg Mackey, Kevin Ellis, Kelly Shelford. Super tackle upon Shelford. There's Ellis. 
Elliot Steven once more. Taking huge shots. Boo starting to echo around Wilderspool. Game threatening to get out of hand. Castleford tried to spoil Warrington's rhythm. It didn't work. Ellis with an abortive dropper. Well, if Featherston have decided to niggle the way out of trouble, Halifax and Castleford tried that. It got them nowhere. Can't see it doing the trick for Featherston. Scrums two apiece. Penalties three to one for the visitors. Score 14-2. 33rd minute. Richard Gunn then activates either roll party. Gunn throws left. Penalty midfield offside. <laughs> Gary Chambers. Gary Chambers after that illegal shot. You saw it. Will have to leave the park, which enables block busting forward. Gary T's wearing 15 to come on the park. Chambers was wearing eight, gone for a brew. Gary T's wearing 15, comes on. So here come Rovers. Gary S. Price battered there. Here's Brett Dance. Steve Malloy. Would love to score against his old club, of course. 12 points in the game, two full scores. Six minutes to the hooter, Dance at it again. Steve Malloy finds Francis Maloney. Super handling skills from the, the uh, Featherston team there. Richard Gunn stepping through the hole. I'm looking for a kick time sign, it's not forthcoming. Two tackles in hand for the Rovers. Maloney. Either row party bringing a big load at pace. Now it is kick time for Featherston then. Little chip kick, Warrington coming up in possession with, I believe, sub Gary Tees. It's faster. Look at the onboard computer. Five minutes to the break then. Warrington could do with another score. Lee Penny, rampage in midfield. Thinks he's a forward. There's Ellis. Rain picking up again at Wilderspool. Ellis going central. Rain slanting in from left to right. It's Tightsell. Looks for the half. Gets there. There's Davis. Kick time. Davis chips into the pocket. Outstanding fullback Martin Pearson takes super style. Good defensive chase. So all quiet now at Wilderspool Stadium. Here's sub Terry Manning. Running into a blue and yellow wall. Ball goes left. Featherston moving it great style. Terry Manning leads a defender in his wake. Featherston sticking to the task. Great style then. Not out of the game by a long shot. Moving the ball. Great style and breaking the half. There's Francis Maloney. Rob Myler called upon to supply defence. Does it, sets off, he can ghost past defenders. <laughs> Chooses to burst through them. Super run from Myler there, super take, super attack. Here's Foster. Seen all there is to see in top class rugby league. Had a long and illustrious uh, rugby league career, Matt Foster. Gary Tees. Breaks the half. Three minutes to the break. It's Tightsell. Trainer coming on for the visitors. Don't know who's picked up the knock. Warrington with tackles in hand then. 14 metres inside the visitors' half. Shelford goes. Shelford bursting through the gap there. It is kick time for Brian Johnson's men. Converted score before half time would make the game safe. Greg Mackey chips, chases. Big panic. Drop out from under the bar. Applause for that uh, entertaining Warrington attack once again. Warrington with the rain hard into their faces now. That's Kevin Ellis, Welsh international. High tackle, either row party. Well, I have said the tackles were threatening to get borderline. If the match officials don't clamp down upon them, things can get out of hand. Anyhow, 
penalty's gone for two in favour of the visitors. Robin Whitfield consulting his touch judge. Will not do Featherston any good to try and niggle uh, Warrington's game. We'll just concede penalty after penalty with Jonathan Davis knocking about. That usually means a bag full of points. Davis electing to kick for touch. So it's Davis right footed, slide rule kick. Set of six tackles midway in the red zone. Two minutes, 15 seconds. Warrington could do with another six points. There will be some injury time to add on. As usual, we've got 17 footballs on the pitch now. Featherston using the old professionalism, keeping them on the park. Mind you, without being sarcastic, that's probably all they'll see of the football. So then, here come the wire. Kelly Shelford feeds Gary Tees. We have a whistle for something in backfield. Well, Warrington sacrificing five tackles there. Penalties go, five to two. Matt Foster, allegedly the guilty party. So then, Richard Gunn restarts proceedings. Ball comes out. We have another penalty. <laughs> Comedy time at Wildersville Stadium. Supporters on the far side. Open arms. Anyhow, Martin Pearson getting uh, us back to the football. Martin Pearson looks a class act to your commentator. Gun restarts play. Featherston driving it 16 metres into the Warrington half. We are in the last minute. Gary S. Price taking a triple tackle. This Brendan Tuta looks for runners. There's a pile up midfield. Richard Gunn then feeds. Francis Malone is released. Ivor Row Party. Class centre. Let's have a look at the clock. 12 seconds remaining. Leo Casey wearing 10. Kick time for the uh, post office roadman. There is the skyer. Francis Maloney lifts the ball. Lee Penny comes down extremely heavily there. Tremendous work done in the Warrington defence. Greg Mackey coming up in possession. Kevin Ellis is away on the run. Big hit supplied in the tackle. Leo Casey had a sly glance at the touch judge. He got away with it. Mark Foster's at it midfield again. 16 seconds into injury time then. Gary Tees gets shut to Leo Casey. No worries. There's Shelford switching play. Lee Penny has Mackey in support. Takes the tackle. Game getting fierce in midfield. One niggle too many results in Warrington's third penalty of the afternoon. Penalty count 6-3 for the visitors. Scrum count two apiece. Match score 14-2. Two Warrington tries from Elliot in the ninth minute. Myler in the 24. A Davis kick. Whatever. Deep into injury time now. John Thursfield looking to activate proceedings right in front of us. Here's Tytzel. Steps into the tackles. Picks up eight metres. Thursfield acting half. Here's Shelford. Misses out Davis. Releases Rob Myler. Good cover defence. Runners everywhere for the Warrington Club on that occasion. Here's Greg Mackey. Paul Cullen. Cullen steps through the hole. Releases Foster, looks to be tackled before he takes the ball. Super all-round rugby league there. Here's Mackey. Kevin Ellis. Ellis cuts play, goes central, bottled up by Gary S. Price. Ball comes out, that should be the final play of the half. Now in the second minute of injury time. Well, there's a scrum forming. Advantage for the Rovers. Scrum count should go three to two. As just so done. So there, Featherstone breaking the quarter line. 
three-man Warrington tackle. Not sure what's happened to the Hooter. Now in the third minute of injury time. Steve Malloy feeling the force there. Ellis involved. Malloy playing the ball. Richard Gunn scoots away. Davis involved in the tackle. Leo Casey wearing 10. Gunn assumes the role. Will feed Brett Dant as released. Price, Gary H. Price. Kick time then for Steve Martin's men. Won six and lost five in the first division this season. Suffering away from home. Lee Penny takes it at mid off. Then goes. Penny steps. Picking up big yardage. And the Hooter sounds. What an exciting first half there. So the half time score in an evenly contested Stones Bitter Championship game. Wellington 14, Featherston 2. Right, welcome back. Second half, 14 2 for the wire. Once again, thanks to our young mascot, young Ken Gosling. Hope he's enjoying his day. Thanks to everybody concerned for sponsoring the game, enabling it to take place. Match sponsors Hertel UK Limited, Match Ball Index, Match Programme, Marsden Chemicals. Let's go. Stopwatch is underway. Featherstone coming out on defence once again. Be interesting to see how Featherstone go about uh, reducing the deficit. Two full scores down in the game at the moment. Essential for them to find some farm away from Post Office Road. Steve Malloy down there wearing eight, looking to instigate a running move. Gary S. Price, well bottled up. Gary T. still on the field. So Mr. Chambers is knock, keeping him out of the play and looking through the Featherstone personnel. Nobody jumps out at me and says, I was subbed. So we'll assume the personnel's the same. Tutor playing the ball midfield. Richard Gunn feeds Brett Dant. Former Canterbury Valleys player. Here's Lee Penny. Former Oral St. James. Destined for big things. Kevin Ellis acting half. Here's Jonathan Davis. Correction, thanks Stuart. Rob Myler. I'll have to clean my glasses for next week. Matt Foster acting half. Scoots away. Gary H. Price. How often do you see two second row forwards with the same name? There's one for the uh, Noels amongst you. Craig Teitzel dragging the defence with him. Uh, Carl Gibson on the tackle. It's Shelford. Gary T's piling in, unloads. Kelly Shelford again. Kevin Ellis looks good. Craig Tysel crops up in the centres. We have a mix-up and possession for Featherston. Carl Gibson wearing three, getting up somewhat slowly. Took a batter in there. Big run midfield. There's Price once again. If Featherston can get a score within the first five in this second half, the game will be on. Upstairs shot, quite right. Mr. Whitfield, correct. Don't know about any intent. Featherston player taking hell of a crack there. That will have shaken a few fillings out of place. Not sure who it is. Robin Whitfield pointing the finger at Gary Tees, giving him a warning. Any repetition, Warrington could find themselves down to 12. Everybody's uh, spoken about this high tackle rule. Why on earth match officials can't give 10 minutes for it? I don't know. It makes no sense. But the match official can only implement the rules that he is given. With that, there is justice for Featherstone. Six tackles to come from within the Warrington red zone. Brian Johnson believes in big defence. Some is required right now. Owen Simpson wearing five. Tackled by Tightsell. Richard Gunn acting half. Brett Dant comes on the run. Martin Pearson, outstanding fullback. Crops up, goes on a mazy run, Tease puts a stop to it, Richard Gunn assumes the role, this will be for Brendan Tutor, here he is, going hard, Featherstone in, Shin, closer and closer, Gunn, Dance, Maloney, 
long ball thrown for Price. Forward pass. Jonathan Davis on the tackle. Excellent flowing passing move. Spoiled by a forward pass. Possession for the wire. Advantage at the scrum following the forward pass for Brian Johnson's men. Warrington had a run of difficult games at the start of the season. Have faced Castleford, Halifax, Leeds, Oldham, Hull. I've got some more bigger difficult games over the holiday break. Whatever you're doing, keep days free. Come and see the team at the top of the table battling hard. Here's Paul Cullen, also battling hard. Taking a big shot from Gary S. Price. That's Craig Tightsell. Upstairs tackle. Upstairs tackle with Craig Tightsell's a long way up. Here's Mackey. Dave Elliott. Scored out of a super try in the first half. Points difference decided the Stones Bitter Championship last year. It is imperative that Warrington keep the foot on the gas. Gary T's just has done that. Shelford goes. Shelford sprints in half, throws in field. There's nobody home. Greg Mackey turns up. Steve Malloy takes possession. Kelly Shelford there trying to keep the running move going. So Richard Gunn, Brett Dart, Terry Manning. Deepening gloom now at World of Spill. Early December Sunday afternoon. Everybody happily watching an excellent game. Six pounds gets you admission on the terraces. You should be here. We will have a scrum down. Advantage at the scrum for Featherstone. Well, there's the crowd's reaction to that. Scrum count presently three to two for the visitors. Steve Martin will have had many big words at half time. Scrum count goes four to. Here's wingman Owen Simpson going. What a tackle. Copy boot tackle. Lee Penner. Dart feeds in field for two to. Penny on the tackle again. And a crash tackle it was too. Game hotting up. Frantic pace. Steve Malloy wearing eight. Departed from Wildersfield when he was omitted from the Wembley lineup. Spent time at Leeds. Here's Maloney. Long ball Martin Pearson. Has had an outstanding game this far in. There's Price. Kick time then for Steve Martin's men. Two full scores in the game. One tackle to go. Maloney chips into the in-goal area. Mark Foster does the same thing and puts the ball in the burger stand. Right then, Jonathan Davis sustained Featherstone Rovers pressure there. Davis will look to kick long. Featherstone supporters have now changed ends. Encouraging the team. Martin Pearson comes out, breaks the half, picks up 10. Battles for 15, unable to get there. Tightsell on the tackle. Richard Gunn assumes the role. Here's Price. Correction, Leo Casey. So then, Featherstone keeping hold of it. Building attacks, big pressure on the Warrington defence. Excellent tackle, Kelly Shelford upon Gary H. Price. Ivor Roparte, Brett Dant. Bottled up midfield, 18 metres out, central. Richard Gunn scooting away. It is kick time then for the men in the orange shots. Here's Brett Dant. Chips through, Lee Penny's on duty at the back. Knocks out again. So Warrington was standing. 12 tackles from within their own red zone. In the last four minutes, Featherston trying the best to close the game down. Can't knock them for effort and commitment. Warrington was standing the pressure. There's Martin Pearson, sprints, breaks the half. Picks up nine metres, big tackle on the far side. Kevin Allison, Rob Myler. So there's 14 consecutive tackles for the visitors. Warrington players got a knock. Leo Casey's storming central. Thursfield on the tackle with Elliott. More and more tackles piling up. Something's got to give. Steve Malloy. Richard Gunn's off again. Featherston definitely picking up the yards. 17 consecutive tackles then. 
Waddington on the back foot in a big way. There's the score. There's an excellent score. After all that pressure for Brett Dance. Well, there you saw that would have been the 18th consecutive tackle for Brian Johnson's men. Brett Dance has looked lively. Richard Gunhandle drove the ball in. Dance, crop, dance cropped up. The cover defence was going the wrong way. Dance had a yard, crashed in, closing the game down. Score presently, Warrington 14, Featherston Rovers 6. <laughs> now then, fullback Martin Pearson looking to put the game down to one full score. Concerted, big pressure on the Warrington defensive line. Pearson finding himself a metre shy of the quarter line, maybe 14 metres in. Regulation conversion is successful. Score goes 14 points to eight. Now then, Dave Elliott, who was wearing 12, has gone away for a break. Big tackling, you keep an eye on this guy, Paul Derbyshire, crash tackler wearing 14 comes on. Recap the game score, 14 points to eight, two tries for Waddington. Darns opening the Featherston try scoring account there, six points only in the game. Now in the 50th of eight, sir, it's boiling up, it's getting good. Waddington being forced to work hard. Law coming out from the uh, railway end where most of the Waddington supporters are housed now. Steve Malloy takes the tackles. Featherston playing it great since half time. Gary Tease gets a tackle in. Play developing right below us. Super tackle upon Brendan Tuta from Kevin Ellis. Try scorer, Dart, chips into the pocket. Rob Myler got a try earlier on, comes out, attacks the quarter, gets there, drags the defence, picks up an extra three. Featherston Rovers sticking to the task great style. Warrington being forced to dig deep. Lee Penny going central. Takes a double tackle. Next score in this game could prove to be crucial. That's Mark Forster. It's Tightsell. Picking up big yardage. Either row party wearing four involved in the tackle. Both the coaches now will be wondering what's going to happen next. This game is on a knife edge. Ellis for Shelford. For Davis, Rob Myler takes the ball and is hammered. We have a bit of niggle in the tackle. Supporters on the far side giving vent to their frustration. Meanwhile, Shelford puts the ball in orbit. Pearson's been perfect all day. Well, match official on hand. Paul Cullen penalised. Penalty count starting to grow. Penalties going eight to three in favour of the uh, post office roadman. So Featherstone coming out then. Falls at the quarter line. A bit of atmosphere creeping in at this famous old stadium. Featherstone in the ascendancy. Warrington have seen it all this season, been there before. They will keep tackling everything. So here we go. Ball is in midfield. First field affects the tackle. Brendan Tuta releases Francis Maloney. Maloney battling like a Trojan. Exciting rugby league being played now. Waddington were given 40... Excuse me. Featherston were given 14 points on the coupons before this game. Waddington 5-6 to six on to affect the win. There's an intelligent kick rolling out of play. A metre shy of the corner flag. Advantage at the scrum will go to Brian Johnson's man. Nerve tingling anticipation up here now in the Coventry box. So, Warrington skipper Greg Mackey looking to make the scrum count four to three. For Rovers. Has just so done. Mark Forster, seen plenty of the ball today. Tackled by Featherston, loose forward two, sir. There's Ellis. 
Gary Tees fighting hard midfield. Leo Casey involved. There's Tightsell, steps, attacks the hole, picks up good yardage. Richard Gunn on the tackle. There's Thursfield. Paul Cullen battling, picking up good yardage. Round of applause is supplied. Here's Ellis. Shows a dummy. Tees forgets the ball. It comes out again. Match officials drop one. Well, you have another look at that play. Robin Whitfield is a referee and a commentator. End of story. Well, he's given the advantage at the scrum for Featherstone Rovers. Look for the scrum count to go. 5 3. Chorus of Boos coming in. Robin Whitfield's down there to do a job, doing it to the best of his ability. Scrum count 5 3. Featherstone not away. There's a knock on in the tackle, which has not been missed. Ironic cheers, echo all round Wilderspoon. Look at the clock then. 54th of 80. Everything to play for. Greg Mackey's got a knock in the uh, cheekbone area. Here come the wire then. Here's Ellis, Mackey, Derbyshire, driving in, makes the half, takes Gary S. Price with him, he's then mauled in the tackle, Mackey, Shelford's gone, super cover defence from the Rovers on that occasion, Richard Gunn getting in a super tackle, there's Mackey, Mackey cuts, he avoids a high shot, Thursfield, Paul Cullen, Cullen, Attacks the centre row. Cullen goes. Excellent effort, Paul Cullen. Delayed at the tackle again. Robin Whitfield needs to get a grip of the tackles. It's T's. Unloads for Shelford. Shelford goes, stacks the fullback. Shelford. In she shot. Oh, there's a disgusting decision. I'm going to be quiet again. I can't understand this, whatever. <laughs> I'm a commentator, he's a referee. Penalty count then, 9-3. to three. All those tackles that have been delayed through Marlin, ignored. Kelly Shelford wasn't trying to make the double movement, he wanted to get his feet. Mr Whitfield penalised him. You can tell what the Warrington supporters think of that. Meanwhile, Paul Darvish has just tackled Malloy. Game is hot. Everything to play for. Either row party. Hammered midfield. So the game going on then. Tightsell in the tackle. So the game balanced precariously. 14-8. Bags of time. 22 minutes left at Wildersville Stadium. What it's a need a score of some sort to enable themselves to feel confident. The two prices involved in the tackle there. Abuse reigns in for the delay at the play of the ball. First field feeds Shelford. Shelford's going. Huge roar comes out from the railway end. What a place to be on a Sunday afternoon. And there's a penalty. Well, I would expect Jonathan Davis to try and stretch the Warrington lead out to eight points. He will do just that. It's all right for the likes of me and everybody on the terraces to have a go at Robin Whitfield. He's only applying the rules. There's another penalty for chatting back. Featherston committing suicide. Davis will be successful. A hot topic up here on the gantry at half-time is the fact that... Uh, Robin Whitfield is retiring at half-time. I'm sure there will be a million tears shed when that day takes round. Davis now 10 metres closer, maybe 12 metres out. Nine metres to the right of the uprights. Kicking at the gathered Warrington support at that end of the field. Big rain clouds approaching Wildersville from the west.
to Davis then, looking to put more than a full score in the game. I've already told you Davis is second in the point scoring list in the rugby league. Thanks to Hertel UK for supplying the cash to get hold of him in the first place. Davis approaches and he's just successful in the 58th minute. Gary Chambers wearing eight has come back onto the park. Craig Teitzel, who was wearing ten, has gone for a sit down. Waddington able to breathe a little sigh of relief now. There is more than a full score in the game. There's an upstairs ish tackle. Foster getting on with the game. Lee Penny's in the line. Attacks the quarter, unable to get there. Here's Chambers then. Opposite number Steve Malloy, former wire player, spent time at Leeds on the tackle. Gary Tees piles in. Round of applause from the support on the far side. Waddington fighting to stay on top of the Stones Bitter Championship. Gary Chambers. Jonathan Davis is going. Jonathan Davis has got his head back. Davis goes for the corner. Have a look at that. What a try. What a genius. The game is safe. Can you say? Few sort of passing movement. Gary Chambers released the ball. It was not to the ground. Davis took the ball. Odds were definitely against him. Cover was there. Three glowing orange shirts. Davis ignores them. Extreme pace, like a bullet from a gun. Crashes in at the corner. The game breaker, Jonathan Davis. Well, once again, Jonathan Davis there, showing you what he's worth. I couldn't put a price on it. Score goes 20 points to 8. 17 minutes to go. Waddington appearing to be coasting. Featherston have clawed the way back into the game once. There's Richard Gunn on the tackle there. Here's Chambers. Man of the moment. Neil Roebuck wearing 15. He's on for the visitors. I don't know who went away. My apologies. I missed that. Best odds for me there is to say it was somebody called Price. Here's Chambers again. Roebuck on the tackle. Super copybook tackle. Kick time. Try scoring hero. Jonathan Davis chips into the pocket. That is a good kick. It will pull up in goal. No, it doesn't. It rolls out. So... So we'll have a look at the try list. Elliot's try was a stormer in the ninth. The try of the game in the 60th minute from Jonathan Davis. Once again, six pounds gets you into Wilderspool. You've never been, you're missing out. Shelford on the tackle right in front of us. Ball goes to ground. Brett Dant cleans up. Richard Gunn, tackled by Chambers. the ball goes far side, short side running move, ball crosses the half, Steve Malloy taking a big tackle, kick time for the post office road men, Steve Martin's boys came out for the first quarter of the second half, supplied a big effort, it has come to nothing, meanwhile Lee Penny breaks the half, Greg Mackey's got a knock, he's banged his shoulder, has been carrying an injury to his shoulder for three weeks, here's Mark Forster looking to uh, go the length, takes the tackle Paul Cullen sprinting hard <laughs> there's a collision and a half Shelford Chambers Paul Derbyshire Brett Dance involved in the tackle with Neil Roebuck it's Tees Ellis Cuts was back inside, looks for the yard, unloads a great ball for Derbyshire. Brilliant super skill from Kevin Ellis there, have another look at that. First field, look for the Skyer. 
big pressure will be applied. Kelly Shelford chips into the pocket. Owen Simpson picks the ball out. So all that results in a drop out then. Away to our right. Long and central. Greg Mackey says I'll have. Lee Penny crops up. Sprints hard. Looks for a yard. Steve Malloy's got hold of him. Penny's going anyway. Big round of applause again. Delay at the play the ball. Score 20 points to eight. Here's Tease. Warrington have had to dig deep and work hard for this uh, particular scoreline, which leads 20 points to eight. That's Chambers. There's Mackie. Mackie cuts, attacks, feeds Cullen. Cullen scores a super try for the wire in the 65th minute. Well, there you saw play the ball, Greg Mackey broke the initial defence darted through, Paul Cullen took man and ball, facing the wrong way battled hard, gritted his teeth powered over in the 65th minute, making it 24 points to 8 Paul Cullen getting into something of a scoring habit well, game would appear to be safe Jonathan Davis, 10 metres out, 3 metres to the left, kicking to a packed railway end at Wildersville. Looking to make the score 26-8, which does Featherston no justice at all, but that's how Warrington are these days. The goal is successful. So in the first half, departs. Dave Elliott wearing 12, replaces... I'll recap the score after that super Paul Cullen try. Warrington 26, Featherston 8. Once again, Mark Foster's running midfield. Getting cold up here in the ozone layer at Wilderspool. Need the game to stay uh, exciting to keep as warm. Paul Cullen, try scorer. Disappears under three orange shirts. That's Gary Tees. Gary S. Price on the tackle. Shelford missed out for Chambers. 16 and a half stone of uh, prop forward battering in there. Here's Elliot. Ellis. Bit of niggle again. Kevin Ellis getting on with the game, not interested. Davis. Ball excellently taken by Owen Simpson. Simpson stays alive, keeps going. Slightly upstairs, this tackle. Game progressing nicely. Featherston looking to put some respectability on the board. There's the runner, ball breaks the hat, shouts for a forward pass. Never was. Derbyshire on the tackle. Richard Gunn acting half. Good handling move, midfield, solid defence. Massive tackle there, Paul Cullen. So here's Francis Maloney looking to instigate the runners. Maloney wriggles free, goes alone. Captain Mackey on the tackle. There's Ropati. Here's Martin Pearson. Delicate little chip. The ball is there to be chased. You know who. Kicks, goes, and is taken out off the ball. Touch just below us, waves play on. Well, that was a foul, however, no point crying about that. Brett Dodds is then battered by Rob Meyer. Well, the faithful here didn't enjoy that off the ball incident. Game's progressing. Big tackle breaking out there. Eight metres inside the Featherston half of the field. First price. Huge tackle supplied. 
Ball goes amongst the big boys again. That's two to unload super style. Chambers on the tackle. Featherston player with a knock to his left knee in backfield. Richard Gunn playing the ball. Featherston still trying to launch attacks. Ball's come out in the tackle, went forward. Will be a scrum down. So Robin Whitfield then, finally stopping the clock. Featherston player, with a knock to his, let's figure it out, left ankle. Physio making signs to the bench. Substitution will be forced upon the Rovers now then. Finding themselves 18 points down. Gary H. Price, GB Taurus, leaves the pack. Eventually, I'll tell you who's come on. We'll try Gary S. Price. There's a scrum for the wire. Scrum count goes five apiece. Penalty count reads 9-5 for the visitors. Scoreboard reads 26-8 for Brian Johnson's Warrington. Quiet period once again at Wildersville. It's Chambers taking a high shot. Player will remain nameless. Chambers ignores it, gets on with the game. There's Ellis looking to break the half. Taking a real bad one. Robin Whitfield saw that. That's a yellow card offence, if ever there was one. That was a bad one. It's two to being called out. Mr Whitfield just giving out the 100 lines in his study. Penalty count 9-6. Davis will kick for touch to set up the uh, set of six from within the red zone. Waddington looking to get 30 up then. We'll see now. Featherston will have to come up with outstanding resilience to keep this attack at bay. Mackey, Gary Tees, short ball, crashing in. Bit of niggle again. Tees plays the ball. Chambers, Cullen, Chris Rudd, inches short, Chris Rudd, Waddington piling it on then, Paul Derbyshire goes to acting half, Gary Chambers making himself available, missed out for Mackey, Kevin Ellis, there is a gap, Kelly Shelford, Jonathan Davis, unloads, Rob Myler scores the try, in the 73rd of 80. Play well, saw it on your screens. That had to come after Jonathan Davis's touch kick. Tackles used up. Chambers missed out. Ball went midfield. Mackey unloaded a long ball. Jonathan Davis got shot of it quick style. Rob Myler crashes in for his second try, the 73rd minute, making the score 30 points, Warrington, 8 Featherston. So here's your restart then, repeat the score for you, Warrington 30, Featherston 8. Featherston of course promoted last year, all they want to do is establish a platform for next year. A top 8 place for them would be a wonderful achievement for coach Steve Martin, and they've showed plenty of potential today. Here's Cullen. Fighting hard, playing the ball quickly. Derby should impede it accidentally. Gary Tees forgets the ball. We will have a scrum down. Well, four minutes to the break. It's time for me to start thinking about man of the match for both teams. This scrum will go to Featherston, making it 6 5 in their favour. The scrum counts. Francis Maloney. Reed takes possession, Maloney goes. For Featherston Rovers, my man of the match has got to be fullback Martin Pearson. That's an outstanding player. I'll get to the wire shortly. Bit of consternation far side. Game progressing. There's Pearson on the run, showing good strength and pace. <coughs> so Featherston then. Super tackle, midfield. Gary Tees. 
There's Roebuck. There's Brendan Tuta. What a tackle. Dave Elliott on the tackle. Brett Dant chips in goal. Ball runs out on the full. Well, I've already picked out Martin Pearson. Martin Pearson, my man of the match. I'm looking at the Wellington lineup. Difficult to pick out an individual. There's been an all round team performance. Kelly Shelford has shown, says uh, Stewart away to my right. There's Paul Cullen battling midfield. Everybody's had a hand in the Warrington effort. Been some super defence. His chambers has been outstanding as usual. And there's a knock-on. This next scrum should make the scrum count. Seven to five. Still can't make me mind up about a man of the match. So Brett Dant then, looking to make the scrum count seven five. Has just done so. Scoots away. Releases Francis Maloney. Here's Carl Gibson wearing three. Jonathan Davis involved in the tackle. Let's have a look at the onboard computer then. Two minutes at Wilderspill Stadium. Score reading 30 points to eight. Featherstone still pressing hard, looking to get some more points up on the board. So Manning playing the ball. Brett Dant throws the dummy. Gary S. Price is then hammered. Pearson crops up. Davis involved in the tackle with Greg Mackey. Waddington dropping back onto their own try line. Red line defence time. Brett Dant spreads it wide for Neil Roebuck. Super ball for Ivor Roparte. Cover defence is there. Elliot does the job. There's Brendan Tuta. Feeds Leo Casey. Kick time then for Steve Martin's men. One tackle to go. Four yards to go. Game safe for the wire. Featherstone looking to improve the scoring average. There's a kick in goal. Cullen gets there first. Panic stations, the ball goes out. Well, I'm looking round the gantry for nominations for man of the match, and the gentleman to my right has nominated Roland Phillips. There's one for you. Meanwhile, super dropout, bounces into touch. But in the last minute at Wildersfield Stadium, I've got to pick somebody out for the man of the match. Up to now, I'm struggling. To be quite honest with you, I think it's been such an all-round team effort. Everybody's chipped in on attack and defence. It's impossible to pick out an individual. So, we'll have the bloke who put them all out there in the first place, Brian Johnson. Scrum count, 8-5. Featherston still with the foot on the gas. There's a big overlap. Steve Malloy throws inside for Pearson. And there's a well-deserved try for Martin Pearson in the 79th of 80 minutes. We saw there Steve Malloy drove in hard, stayed upright in the tackle, was unable to unload. Martin Pearson had plenty of work to do. When he took possession, showed good pace, he's had a brilliant, outstanding afternoon, was my man of the match for the Rovers, making the score, Warrington 30, Featherston 12 in the 79th of 80. It's a person then, 23 metres out, nine metres in, kicking at the Featherstone end. Strikes well and is successful, making the score 30 points to 14 in the last minute. Well, there's the Hooter. What an exceptional game the Rugby League you saw there. The first quarter of the second half, the game was in doubt. Thanks to match sponsors Hertel UK Limited, the match ball donation by Index and programme sponsorship Marsden Chemicals. Seven tries in that uh, Stones Bitter Championship game for you to enjoy. 
two of them for the Featherstone club. The pick of the Warrington tries, as usual, for Jonathan Davis Scorcher in the 60th minute. Warrington now goes to St. Helens in the Regal Trophy third round or fourth round, something like that. Boot your seats on the coach. That'll be a crunch from Bill Stewartson and Stuart Wilson. Thanks for watching the Stones Bitter Championship game. Thanks to Mr. Peter Hyam, chairman of the top of the table Warrington Club. Mr. Hyam, big changes from last season. The bandwagon just keeps rolling on. Yeah, I think we're playing quite well. We're playing, you'll have to excuse my voice, I uh, had a heavy night last night and a uh, heavy day today. But uh, yeah, I think we're playing really well. All, all three teams are playing really well. There's lots of competition for places and I think that's why uh, we're starting to see uh, the first team really pushing it because they're getting pushed from down below. Well, crowds are up at Wilderspool, Mr. Hyam, by 30%. The team's at the top of the table. We're getting into the meaty part of the season, starting next Saturday with St. Helens away. The investment in Jonathan Davis paying off dividends. Yeah, I think John's paying for himself, and uh, yeah, we're quite happy the way things are going. Could I just ask you, we're getting crowds at the moment of uh, five and a half thousand. I reckon the performance deserves another 1,500 on top of that. The way the team's playing, they certainly deserve it. Yeah, we could do it an average crowd of roughly seven to 8,000. <coughs> Excuse me. If we if we don't get crowds of that size, I think you know we're going to have uh, difficulties in the years to come keeping hold of the players because we need the cash and uh, we need big crowds to uh, pay big tickets. Well, like the directors were saying last season, you've had a hard time from the supporters at Wildersfield. You kept saying, "Wait for the youngsters to come through." You've got Wayne Wright, Yestin Harris, Lee Penny's in the GB squad. Things looking good, and I think the bubble could be around at Wildersfield for two or three seasons to come yet. Yeah, I think. Uh, it's, it's early days, the way we're playing at the moment, um, but I know, I know there's a hell of a lot of talent coming through. And, uh, you know, you talk to Lee, and Lee's getting pushed for his spot. I mean, Robbie Marler's there, Justin Harris can play anywhere in the backs. So there's, lo there's lots of competition that makes the players play. You looking forward to the trip to Knowsley Road next week, Peter? Yeah, I think we'd rather play them early on in the competition than late on. You know, if we win next week, uh, we should, you know, we're quite confident that we can go on and win it then. If we get beat next week, it's back to the uh, league games and uh, we don't want any unnecessary fixtures in between time. So, yeah, I think we're going to uh, Nozzler Road pretty confident, provided we didn't pick up too many knocks today. I think we'll put up a good performance next week. And uh, if we get this sort of support behind us that we had at Sheffield that, uh, last week, I think we'll outnumber the uh, Saints Speckers. Well, 1,500 supporters, now that's an achievement, on a Sunday afternoon over the Pennines, went to Don Valley Stadium. Noisy supporters at every ground that Warrington go to now. Like I've said, the bandwagon's rolling. If I can pin you down, two-word answer, do you think the club can win the league championship? Uh, no comment at the moment. It's early days, I think, you know. No, we're just quite happy with the two points today. And if we can keep picking up... Uh, if we could win the next ten league games, I think we'd win a good shout then. Well, Mr Hyam, thanks very much. OK, thanks. thanks right, I've now been joined by Great Britain, under-21 international fullback Lee Penny. 18 months ago, Lee, you were going along quite nicely in the 18. You went through a baptism season last year. Not a good season for the Wires. Now you're in the team, top of the league, representing Great Britain. Must be a dream for yourself. Yeah, it's good playing with a team at top of the league, and hopefully we can keep there. Beat Saints next week in the um, quarter-finals in the Regal Trophy. Well, expectations amongst the fans, Lee, are rising now. Everybody's sort of expecting Warrington to start winning things. Is pressure transmitting itself to the playing squad, or are you just all happily rolling along? Yeah, we're all happy rolling around. Just keep the um, players playing well, and everybody's trying to get your position, and just have to play well each week. Well, I've noticed in your game just lately, Lee, you start to crop up on attack more and more. The amount of pace that he's knocking about in the three quarters at Wildersfield with Myler, Foster, Davis, everything else. We've got that many attacking options. Opposing defences are running about tackling each other. Yeah, well, Brian Johnson keeps getting on to me, back the forwards up, Kelly Shelf and Gary Chambers, and I'm doing it as um, each week and each week. Well, big crunch game next week against St Helens, then it's Widness away, big fixtures coming up. We've got Wigan here in January, depending on the cup games. If Warrington are still top at the end of January, things will be looking good. Well, we've got to win all the uh, games like Saints and Widness and Wigan. And then to maintain the top of the league. Is Lee Penny happy with Lee Penny's form at the moment? Yeah, I'm playing well at the moment, just um, trying to keep in position. Big pressure for uh, Jersey's here now, Lee. You've got blokes in the A team who are internationals and could play anywhere else in the first division, so nobody can afford more than one bad game. Well, no, not with yesterday Harris coming up. Is he'll be after my full-back position, but hopefully keep playing well and um, keep him out. Well, you're from the Wigan area. You must get a lot of ribbing when you go home. 
things are hotting up between the two clubs, it's going to be Warrington and Wigan at the end of the season, Lee. Well, hopefully, um, hopefully we can beat them. Are players starting to think about uh, a trip to Wembley in May? Well, hopefully, yeah. Yeah, so uh, how did you enjoy playing for Great Britain on Thursday? Well, it's, it's all right playing for Great Britain, but you don't, you don't get the ball as much because all the forwards are trying to take it in and they didn't have the ball much. Well, as I've just been saying to Peter Hyam, 1,500 Warrington supporters went to Don Valley. That's a marvellous number of fans to go anywhere. If I could just ask you, when you're busy at fullback in front of Fletcher End, do any other comments get through to you? No, not really. Just I think know what they're saying to you. They always call me all the fans. Just ignore and get on with your own game. Do you still remember when you came onto the park for your debut against Blackpool? It's been uh, elter skelter upwards for you. Where do you think it's going to end? Well, just stuff keep playing at fullback. Well, I remember playing at Blackpool. I got one try, was it? Yeah. Played a good game and got man of the match, I think, didn't I? Well, I don't want to have a go at a player, but when Graham Steadman came here, international fullback for Castleford, he was subjected to it. And horrendous afternoon, but nobody would like to have been fielding those Jonathan Davis bombers. Well, I've seen Jonathan Davis put the bombers up, and he really put some up high on. Unfortunately, Grimstead didn't take any of them. So Lee Penny's enjoying the winning pay. I am, yeah. Plenty to spend it on. Well, Christmas presents, hopefully. Well, thanks very much, Lee. Thanks a lot. Thanks, mate. Good man.